Today I want to tell a story about the um, rebirth of the Philadelphia Navy Yard um, and its transformation more than 20 years ago. Uh, it was um, transformed by a group of public officials who took it from a closed military base that was left for dead by the Pentagon and turned it into a completely new space that today is helping Philadelphia to be a 21st century city. It went from being a hopeless place that looked like this to a place that today looks like this with really fabulous space. This is a story about how those public officials did that, how they found the um, courage and had the vision to do that. And so it tells us a lot about what we can do today as we're facing large economic development projects, whether that's Market East or um, the waterfront or the land bank. My role in the Navy Yard began in the 1990s when Ed Rendell was mayor, but really it began before that. Uh, my parents were born in Philadelphia, but they moved to the suburbs in the early 1950s, which is when the city of Philadelphia began losing a lot of its population. In fact, between 1950 and 1990, the city lost 25% of its population, 500,000 people who moved out. So I grew up in the suburbs, and I went away to college, and then I came back to Philadelphia um, in the 1980s. And the city was still losing population then, but around the country, a group of mayors was getting elected and tackling problems that had been seen as insurmountable before. So in 1991, Ed Rendell was elected mayor, and I went to work for him in the Commerce Department, where our job was to create jobs in the city. If you weren't in Philadelphia then, the thing to know about it is that it was essentially bankrupt in 1992. The city literally could not borrow money, and it um, had difficulty paying its bills. It had raised taxes 19 times in the previous 10 years, so it had run out of taxes to raise. It had run out of money. Uh, the city's bond rating had been lowered um, the previous year to junk bond status, making it the only large city in America with junk bond status. So in the end, the state of Pennsylvania had to come in and bail us out. Things were so bad that in January of uh, Mayor um, Rendell's first year, one of my first jobs was to go to what we called a weekly cash meeting, where we literally sat around and tried to figure out which bills we could pay that week, based in part on how much money had come in the week before and on who had harassed us the most. <laughs> to make matters worse, the year before Mayor Rendell was elected, uh, the Federal Base Closure Commission had decided to close the Philadelphia Navy Yard. So we had to tackle that problem as well. So on my second month on the job, I was told to go down to the Navy Yard and assess the situation, and I did. <laughs> and like most Philadelphians, I had never been to the Navy Yard, and I was amazed at what I saw. Because in addition to the people who worked there, the Navy Yard is essentially a small town at the foot of Broad Street. So it had housing, it had a church, it had a bowling alley and a hotel, and of course, a McDonald's. The other thing that was amazing to me about the Navy Yard was its size. It's 1,200 acres large. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, let me say it's the size of Center City, Philadelphia, from Spring Garden to South Street, from river to river. Right, so this is a map showing the comparison. And you can see Center City at the top of the screen and the Navy Yard at the bottom. There were also 10,000 people working at the Navy Yard then. They were mostly working building ships. But for many people in Philadelphia, especially in South Philadelphia, the Navy Yard was the family business. It was a way of life. And you could raise your family um, and make a good living without having a college education. So that's what we were losing at the time. There were a lot of politicians who wanted to um, fight the closure decision because they thought that the um, Pentagon was bluffing because in the past the Pentagon had threatened to close the Navy Yard and they had been able to reverse the decision. But we knew that this time the Pentagon wasn't bluffing. So when Mayor Rendell came in, he was faced with a decision. Should he pander to the public 
and fight the closure decision? Or should he face the reality of the situation and get on with it? So lucky for Philadelphia, he decided to face reality and uh, start planning. Unlucky for me, he put me in charge. <laughs> so the Navy Yard had a long and storied history, like the city of Philadelphia. And um, here is a um, building, one of the first buildings that was built at the time of the Civil War, which is when President Lincoln moved it to its current location at the foot of Broad Street. It reached its peak during World War II which is when it was running three shifts around the clock. Um, and that's Judy Garland. She didn't work there, but she's entertaining the troops um, during World War II. But in the 1990s, when we came in, it had become symbolic of the decline of Philadelphia. Um, and so uh, Philadelphia had, at that point, already lost, uh, was, was losing a lot of its manufacturing base, and it had already lost 300,000 manufacturing jobs between 1960 and 1990. And so the Navy Yard represented the loss of even more of those jobs. Philadelphia in the 1990s was essentially seen as a city, the city of Rocky. It was not yet the city that we think of today um, where young people wanted to work. Um, this was before friends and before sex in the city. So cities were not seen as hip and cool. Cities were seen as places for losers. And young people wanted, to, believe it or not, to work out in King of Prussia and in Gladwin. It's sort of amazing. <laughs> Businesses didn't want to locate in Philadelphia either. Businesses didn't want to be here because crime was so bad um, and because the taxes were so high and the cost of government was so high. So that was the view of Philadelphia. The Navy Yard was seen very much as the same way. So in the 1990s, people thought that uh, we were advised generally to uh, let the Navy keep the Navy Yard because it was seen as a place that couldn't be renovated. And real estate experts told us that under no circumstances uh, should we take the property. There was a panel at the University of Pennsylvania in 1994 where a real estate expert said the city should not take this property, it can't be successful. And that was the conventional wisdom. In fact, the city's film office wanted to film the movie 12 Monkeys at the Navy Yard. And if you don't know 12 Monkeys, it's a science fiction movie that's about the end of the world. <laughs> and they thought it was the perfect location. <laughs> and we nixed it. And they did City Hall instead. <laughs> that's why that's it. Um, so, what did we do? That was the situation we were faced with um, when we um, started the project in 1992. And what did we do? We essentially put a great team together that came up with a terrific plan. We built political support for the plan, and then we implemented the plan. So, that, let me just describe that quickly. The team that we put together is arguably the best group of city officials that's ever been put together on a large city project. We did an economic analysis of the site and we decided that the Navy Yard had three important opportunities. The first was its location. It's 10 minutes from Center City, right next to the airport, adjacent to two interstate highways, and next to the port. So we thought that location had to be of interest to some kinds of businesses. The second uh, opportunity was a Navy installation that was still staying. So there was a Navy, group of um, Navy engineers, very high skilled, a thousand engineers were staying at the site, and we decided that we would use them as, excuse the pun, an anchor business, and, um, and that we would help that, they would help us to establish the Navy Yard as a place where high-skilled workers worked. And so today, in fact, that helped us to attract the Federal Energy Hub, which today is down at the Navy Yard, um, studying ways to make buildings more energy efficient. The third opportunity we thought we had was actually the old buildings. Because even though in the 1990s most people thought we should demolish the old buildings because they were so expensive, we decided to keep them and, keep, and create a historic preservation zone because we thought that would differentiate us from other places. And that's what we ended up doing. Our plan was essentially to bring these advantages together and then to create the Navy Yard as a new kind of urban business park that didn't exist anywhere in the country and certainly didn't exist in Philadelphia. So we wanted to bring um, the Navy together with industry and with higher ed 
and to create a new kind of place, um, not unlike Silicon Valley, but with an urban twist, because we wanted people physically to come together using jogging paths and restaurants and public transit. We also set a really high goal for ourselves of jobs. And we decided that we were going to try to create 10,000 new jobs, which is the number of jobs that were being lost. We knew this was ambitious and it would take a long time. So we said it would take 20 years. And when you tell some people that something's gonna take 20 years, their eyes glaze over. But that was what we thought it would take. And um, that's, that's what our um, plan was. And finally, when we did our plan, we then turned it over to PIDC, the Philadelphia Industrial Development Corp, which is the city's economic development arm, because we figured they would be better at managing it than the city. So where is it today? Today, you can go down to the Navy Yard and see for yourself, but it's a very thriving, successful business park that has more than 140 businesses, more than six million square feet of space that's filled, this is Urban Outfitters headquarters, fabulous space. If you haven't seen it, it's tremendous. GlaxoSmithKline is down there, an Elite Platinum building. That's Arocco Pharmaceutical. Um, this is the newest building. It's actually Marriott Courtyard that's going to open next month, um, but has been full um, for the past couple of weeks anyway. And so it's been hugely successful in terms of um, building and um, it's very much underway. And at full build out, the Navy Yard will have twice as many companies and more than 13 million square feet of space available. One of the most difficult things that we had to do was to recreate, try to replace the lost shipyard jobs. Because in 1992, there were only seven shipbuilders around the country, around the world. And we actually went and contacted all of them, and we actually got one to come here. And today, Acker Shipbuilding has the most sophisticated shipbuilding operation in the country at the Navy Yard. Yeah, pretty amazing. Probably the statistic that measures our success the best is the job creation number. Because, as I said, our goal back in the 90s was to try to create 10,000 jobs. And instead, last month, PIDC announced they've reached 11,000 jobs. Great. Pretty amazing. The huge success, and it's still growing. So it's great. So let me close with four lessons from this story and what it can tell us about large economic projects as we move forward, both in Philadelphia and in other cities. The first is that you need a plan. That may sound obvious, but in Philadelphia, we like to do deals and transactions, but not so much planning. In fact, dirty little secret, we probably wouldn't have done the Navy Yard plan if the Defense Department hadn't required it and paid for it. So it's a good thing they did because it enabled us to have a bold vision and to really um, embrace um, a, a plan and, uh, that would allow us to push against the naysayers and to think big, um, which is what a plan lets you do. And if you doubt the importance of a plan, here's a site that you may recognize that didn't have a plan in the 1990s and is still struggling. Yes, it's Market East. The second lesson is that you have to stick to your plan. Again, may sound obvious, but it requires the kind of political will that is sometimes in short supply in Philadelphia. Here, Mayor Rendell deserves a lot of credit. I remember early in the process being in his office one time and he was on the phone with someone who was pitching a crazy idea to him for the Navy Yard and he said to them, well, here's the thing. I keep bring, Terry's here and I keep bringing her Chevrolets and she wants a Cadillac. And I thought, yes, he gets it. And he did get it. Um, he understood that we had high standards and that we had to say no to a lot of um, people who wanted to do things. And we had every crazy, nutty use that ever you can imagine. People who wanted to do the casino race, racetrack, people who wanted to put the auto smasher that's now at the foot of Platte Bridge, the congressman who wanted to do Russian ship scrapping, and my personal favorite, the Disney theme park. Because <laughs> nothing says 21st century jobs like Mickey Mouse. 
But to his credit and the credit of PIDC, they said no, and they stuck to the plan. And um, that's one reason that we held out for really high quality development. The other person who gets credit for this is the district council person, because she supported us, but she didn't try to micromanage the site. She didn't view it as her personal fiefdom and didn't have to be in every little project. And so that's an important lesson as well. The third lesson is that it costs money to do this. We got a lot of money, especially from the federal government. You can't do infrastructure and planning and turn around for old industrial cities without an infusion of money from the federal government. So the good news for the feds is that their investment in the Navy Yard has paid off with five times as much private investment. So it's a good investment of taxpayer dollars. And finally, what we learned from this project was that Philadelphians don't think big enough. So this is one of my favorite sayings by Daniel Burnham, who, if you don't know, is an urban planner who helped to plan the Chicago World Expo. And we learned from this project that even standing up to the naysayers, we even didn't anticipate how successful we would be. That even our plan, which was an act of great political courage and vision, underestimated how many jobs we'd create ahead of schedule. 11,000 jobs ahead of schedule, pretty amazing. So the next time someone in Philly tells you that you have to put up with an ugly big box building because the site won't support high quality design, or some so-called expert tells you you can't get a good tenant because no one good will locate there, or some elected official tells you that he knows his district better than you do, so you should butt out, tell them the story about the Philadelphia Navy Yard and what can happen when you have a good plan clear vision, and leaders with the guts to think big. Thank you. <laughs>